Hey friends, welcome to the Taking Your Next Step podcast from Collegians for Christ. Through each episode, we will journey together focusing on becoming better followers of Jesus. If you are eager, like I am, to follow Jesus Christ, then take your next step now by joining us in today's episode. All right, so we're continuing our talk, our discussion here on this idea of taking a day off, of what the Sabbath truly means in principle. And we talked about the fact that Sabbath was made for man. Jesus got in trouble all the time uh, because he kept breaking the Sabbath in the Pharisees' eyes, but he tried to give them the teaching of what the Sabbath was truly about. And that's what we're trying to to understand. I've made very clear from the last episode uh, that I'm not teaching that we are bound by Jewish law, that we are bound to keep the Sabbath. We understand when Jesus resurrected, uh, the church began to celebrate the day of rest and worship on Sunday rather than Saturday. What I am saying is that God gave the Sabbath for man. And God gave the Sabbath to be a gift, to be a form of life. We talked about that on uh, Tuesday's episode, that God blessed three things. It was the animal kingdom and humanity to be fruitful and multiply. And he blessed that seventh day, that day of rest and worship, to be a day to give us life, to provide life both physically, mentally, spiritually, uh, so that we can be the best we can be. As we go on here, I want us to keep think about a couple other truths here. Uh, uh, this that is this the sabbath is not a law we must keep but rather a principle we should practice okay that's where i'm trying to draw the difference here so there's a principle we find in the truth of the sabbath so first we find our spiritual rest in jesus we understand that Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30, that's where we kind of began uh, this whole idea of cutting busyness out of our lives, to get the restlessness out, the, the hurry. Verse 28 says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So we can find rest for our souls in this weary, weary world. Then he says, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And so believers have entered into a rest that we experience while we're working, while we're stressed out, while we're ministering, while we're doing all these things. Now, one thing I've noticed over the years is that with the understanding of this verse, some thoughts come from this, that you have entered into the rest and therefore you just need to work as hard as you can for Jesus. And I understand we need to work hard. The time is short. Uh, Souls need to be saved. But we also have to remember that we don't have our glorified body as of yet. You and I have this flesh and this flesh that we have to drag around, this flesh that must be uh, nourished, this flesh that must be taken care of. And you and I and our spiritual and mental uh, capabilities are either helped or hindered by the physical flesh. And so what I see sometimes is this idea because we find our rest in Jesus. You don't have it. You don't need to rest. You just need to get to go, 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 go um, until Jesus comes back. And while I say yes to that, they also need to understand how our bodies work, how our minds work. And we've talked about this in our previous episodes about how the culture, this 24-7 busy culture, distractions everywhere, is the greatest spiritual enemy that you and I face at the moment. And so we find our spiritual rest in Jesus, but we find our physical rest in having a day off. And that's what Sunday is supposed to be. It's supposed to be a day set apart for rest and worship. Now, for you, Sunday may truly be your day off, a day of rest and worship. But can I say from personal experience, uh, God's given us the privilege to travel around all over this country as we help start Collegians for Christ Ministries. We've been in and out of a lot of churches and different areas. We've had the privilege of meeting some great people. But I see this. There are some churches and people that, yes, Sunday really is a truly Their day off is a day of rest and worship. I find many people, though, and churches included, that Sunday is just turned into a day like any other day, going and doing. I mean, you think about our culture. Everywhere is open. Uh, You can shop. You can do everything that you want to do on Sunday other than go to Chick-fil-A, right? (laughs) How many of you think, I'm going to go to Chick-fil-A a Sunday, and you, you can't go, right? They're closed. We do that every once in a blue moon traveling. And so we understand Sunday is supposed to be this day, but our culture is so busy. I can remember 
years ago, you know, when I was younger, I'm dating myself, I'm 42, I'll give you my age, right? But I can remember being 18, 20, 22, and I remember things were just shut down on Sundays. Sundays were really a day, I didn't go to church, I wasn't a believer, but it was even a day that everything was just kind of low-key, and you had to slow down. That's not the case now. Culture is busy, there's something 24-7, it doesn't matter who you are, there's something you can do, and almost our culture is driven that, uh, remember we've talked about this, we equate success with busyness, the busier we are, the more successful we are, and that is not the case. We can only go but so much. Even uh, research shows that after about 40 to 50 hours of working, you become less productive. That is your most productive area, so that's about a five to six day work week. Which shows what? That yes, you need a day off. Now, while Jesus came to give us spiritual rest, we cannot fully experience that rest if we don't take care of our bodies. Remember, we're humans trapped in our sin-cursed flesh. We require food, sleep, and rest to function. So here's the, the uh, the truth here. The Sabbath is a principle some believers need to experience. When I say Sabbath, I'm not referring to us keeping the Jewish law. I'm saying Sabbath means this, to stop. That's what it literally means. So the day that we stop is a principle some believers need to experience. The Sunday, if it's going to be our Sunday. But can I say this? For some, Sunday is truly not a day of worship and rest. It's just another day filled with physical and mentally exhausting work. You see, there are some churches that maybe have a service Sunday morning, and that's it. And their people go home, and they've worshipped, and they go do whatever they want to do, but they have opportunity to go and rest. Some churches have things going on from early in the morning till a little bit after lunch, and then have other people coming back to train and do things maybe with choir, and then another service and other things going on. And many times when it's like this, and I'm not talking down or saying anything negative, but I just am viewing, then Sunday becomes nothing more than a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It doesn't become a day of rest for many people, and that would include the pastor. It would include staff. It would include the members who are involved. Uh, You have to think about this. Uh, if, If a church has people, most of its members, let's just use the average, work Monday through Friday. And then they have required outreach and activities on Saturday. And then there's ministries and things going on Sunday. When do those members get a day of rest? You say, well, Sunday's a day of rest. Is it really, though? Is Sunday really a day of rest for the pastor? Mm, No. Is Sunday really a day of rest for the staff, for the Sunday school teachers, for those in the choir and so forth? Now, some of them it may, some of them may not. It just depends on how busy they are. What I'm trying to say is sometimes the church can really cause people not to be able to take that day of rest. They have expectations Monday through Friday with work. They have expectations on Saturday, uh, maybe with the church, uh, outreach events, different things. And then Sunday, where do they get their day of rest? And this is why as I talk to people and just ask them how they're doing and see, people are just this. They are just worn slap out. They're exhausted both mentally, physically, spiritually. They're just going through the motions. They have no joy in life. And they're literally killing themselves physically for Jesus. And that's not what Jesus said when he said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Because he said this. He said, Take my yoke upon you. And he said this, and learn of me. When we learn of him, we learn of how Jesus lived his life. And that's not how Jesus lived. We find constantly Jesus doing what? Separating himself to go what? Up into a mountain to pray. After a busy day's work, he would get silent and get along with God. Jesus would take days off. We see that throughout Scripture. That's Jesus' way of doing it. And I've personally experienced this too many times in my own life, running most every day of the week, week after week for Jesus, doing it for his sake, doing stuff on Saturday, doing stuff all day Sunday, and then Monday through Friday, working or ministry or other stuff, and then you're on fumes, you have no joy, you're tired, you're mentally exhausted, That all equals one thing, spiritual dryness. It equals no joy in life, miserable. And you say, "Uh, you've got me. That's where I'm at. Or I've been there. I understand what you're talking about. Or even worse, 
the demands either we place on ourselves, and I don't want to fault the church completely, because sometimes we do it to ourselves, or we don't know how to say no. I'm just trying to give you some things that I've seen and experienced myself. But we go, 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 do, 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 and then our family gets no time. Our wife or our husband, our kids. I see that too many times with pastors and staff. They run Monday through Sunday, and there's no time for the kids. Kids, just come on. We got to go do this. We got to go do that. And then the kids get frustrated and angry. Who? At God. At the church. And we see many times, not the sole reason, but we do see many times getting frustrated and leaving because the man's first calling becomes his last calling in sacrifice to Jesus. And what do they think about Jesus? Not very high. One writer said this, The Sabbath has largely been forgotten by the church, which has uncritically mimicked the rhythms of the industrial and success-obsessed West. The result? Our road-weary, exhausted churches have largely failed to integrate Sabbath into their lives as vital elements of Christian discipleship. It is not enough that we do. It is not as though we do not love God. We love God deeply. We just do not know how to sit with God anymore. So true. It's not that these people don't love God. We just have no idea of how to sit with God anymore. And I can say that's me. We have become perhaps the most emotionally exhausted, he goes on to write, emotionally exhausted, psychologically overworked, spiritually malnourished people in history. And I would say, absolutely, you are right. So when we think about this idea of a Sabbath, a day of rest, are you truly taking a day to do what? Remember, Sabbath means this, to stop. To stop buying from Amazon, to stop running around, to, to stop. It does not just mean to take a day off. You understand, I can take a day off and still be busy. I can have a day off from work. What we're talking about is having a day of rest that is a discipline, that is a principle where we can cultivate a spirit of restfulness in our lives. It's where we cut out the busyness so that we can allow our spirit our soul and our body to be able to be refreshed in order to do what? To truly worship. To allow our minds the capacity to worship rather than going Sunday morning to worship and being so tired, so distracted, so busy. You're just like, man, I can't wait. I barely got here. I can't wait to get out of here. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. I'm ready to go to bed. And I got to go back and do Monday. And it just becomes this vicious cycle. You see, it's not going to happen by accident. A day of rest is going to be hard because honestly, we're all very driven. We, we go, go, go. But if we can learn this discipline, it will help us tremendously. For some of us, honestly, it's going to be the difference of continuing in church for the long run or not. For some of us, it's going to be the difference of our kids loving Jesus or hating Jesus. For some of us, it's going to be the difference of truly knowing God versus knowing of God, truly worshiping It's going to be the difference of allowing us to dictate our lives rather than the culture dictating our lives. Are you taking a day each week to stop in order to rest and worship? If you are doing it, does it fall under one of these two categories? As we think about the day that we're setting aside, whether it's Sunday, and this may help you to say, okay, Sunday's not really a day of rest and worship to me. Maybe I need to carve out some time on Saturday or Friday or Monday. I know people's schedules are all different. Not everybody works on Monday through Friday. Some people are in school, classes. You've got obligations and stuff. But can I tell you this? You cannot go seven days a week, week after week, uh, without becoming physically exhausted, without becoming mentally drained, without just saying this, I am hating life right now. I do not enjoy life. And many of us have found ourselves there. Why? Because we're not taking the gift that God has given us. There is spiritual life. There is uh, mental well-being in that day of rest. So here's the two categories. Ask yourself, uh, if it does not, I'm saying if it does not fall under one of these two categories, ask yourself, what could I do for the next 24 hours that could fill my soul up with joy? That's one of the categories. The next one, what is it that truly helps me to find rest? As you think about your Sunday or your day 
Is it a day that is filling you up with joy? Are you doing things on that day that accomplish that? Are you doing things on that day that truly help you to find rest, physical rest, mental rest? If you're not, then your day is not what God designed for it to be. Ask yourself this, am I tired and exhausted most of the time? If your answer to that is yes, then this may be a discipline that you need to work to practice. Do I really find enjoyment in life right now? If your answer to that is not really, then maybe like me, I found myself tired and exhausted most of the time. And I realized, okay, you got to stop. You just got to stop. You got to reset. I'm not enjoying life right now. It's just this vicious cycle of going, 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 going. And I just I wish I could get off the roller coaster, but I can't. It's time to take a moment of silence. It's time to stop. You see, we need to stop long enough to eliminate the busyness of our life and to reset our mind, body, and soul and spirit to be with Jesus. I know this episode has taken just a little bit longer. I always try to narrow them down to about 12 minutes, give or take. But I just wanted to finish this up with this thought here. This is a very, very important discipline in our lives. And I believe as I view the church and I view people's lives, it is the discipline that is missing in our lives. And you and I need to grab a hold of it. You and I need to uh, evaluate our Sundays. We need to evaluate our week. Where is the margin in our life? Where are we taking a day of rest? Because God gave this to us as a gift. And it's not going to happen by accident. You best believe everyone and everything in life is going to draw for for you. You're going to have to learn to say no. And that's hard. But we have to learn to say no to people, to things. And you have to understand, we're talking about a day of rest. Rest for you may be spending time with family over at their house cooking. That doesn't mean you can't do that. We're talking about a day of rest. It may be you enjoy whatever your little hobby is. Maybe that brings you fulfillment. You say, I'm not saying you have to sit on the couch like a vegetable. I know some people are religious with their Sunday naps. Maybe that's you. Maybe the Sunday nap is where you get it. And that's great. Make sure you practice it. Make sure you practice it week after week. Make sure uh, that when your life is feeling like, okay, I'm not enjoying life or I'm really exhausted, you've got to hit the brakes. You've got to to throw it in park and just stop and sit and allow yourself to reset. And just remember that the Sabbath was not made for man, but God created. Man was not made for the Sabbath, but God created the Sabbath for man as a gift to you so that you could feel fulfilled and you could feel joy in your life. Thank you for taking the time to listen. If this podcast has been helpful to you, please share it with a friend or subscribe to stay up to date on the latest episodes. You can connect with Collegians for Christ online for more information and resources at cfccampusministry.com.